the weird circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out of the past stories, strange and weird. Bellkeeper, toll the bell so that all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. Once again, it's Weird Circle time at the Ogden's Playhouse. Tonight, we are to hear an adaptation of the Ambrose Beer story, Middle Toe of the Right Foot. To the mystery story fan, tonight's presentation promises keen listening pleasure. To the smoker who rolls his own cigarettes, Ogden's fine cut promises smooth smoking pleasure. It's a promise that comes true with every cigarette rolled with Ogden's. That's why we call attention to our standing invitation to try Ogden's when in need of a cigarette tobacco. You'll find Ogden's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now the Ambrose Beer story, The Middle Toe of the Right Foot. Rotting away? Yeah. Do you think anyone will uh, show up to claim it tomorrow? Mm, Gertrude Manton's brother's been notified. That house has been empty now for ten years. Do you think Manton will show up? I wish he would. Manton killed his wife and children there. Well, what happened to this fellow Manton? I don't know. Never found a trace of him yet. And you a deputy sheriff? Better shine up your badge and get busy. Well, I'll find the murderer someday. Somehow. Well, no wonder the ghosts live there. <laughs> it gives me the creeps. Now, look. Even the trees are all leaning to windward, trying to get away. <laughs> Come on, let's drive on. All right. Come on. Yeah, Ross will be waiting at the hotel. We'd better get along. <coughs> Why don't you look where you're going? Why, I'm sorry. I was only... Now get out of my way. Some people are the clumsiest. Clack. Uh, good day, sir. I want a room. Yes, sir. Gladly. Will you sign the register? Front! Uh, you will have room 212, Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Grossmith. Oh, uh, Mr. Grossmith, I uh, I think we've met, sir. What? A uh, bumping acquaintance in the screen door just now. Well, uh... Allow me to introduce myself. Ross, sir, editor of the Marshall Advocate. Glad to welcome you to our city. Are, um, are you here on business? If I am, it's my own business. My mistake, stranger. Toad. Well, sir, here we are. Hello, King. Oh, uh, you must be Mr. Sanchez. Yes, sir. How do you do, sir? Welcome to Marshall. Uh, it's good of you to meet us here, Mr. Rosser. We county politicians, like the deputy here and myself, can't get along without you great men of the press. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Come on over here and sit down. That's right. Now, um, you want to talk about the Manton House first or the uh, corner? Oh, wait a minute. First, let's order something long and cold, oh. huh? <laughs> the Manton place will take care of itself. It's a good idea. That was a hot drive. 
Well, now, about this candidate for coroner, Russell. I can't see, King, why a man can't be a good coroner just because he's got a cast in his eye. Well, you know, Russell, I, I have a theory that any physical defect goes with some mental or moral defect. <laughs> just can't help myself. I hate and always hated any kind of deformity in a man or in a woman. I infer, then, Mr. King, that a lady lacking the advantage of a nose would find it a hard struggle to become Mrs. Thomas King. <laughs> <laughs> well, put it that way if you want, but seriously... I once nearly married a most charming girl who... Well, I, I was a kid lawyer studying at Harriston. Each time I came home here, I rushed over to the Brewers. I think I was really in love with Gertrude Brewer. She was lovely. Then, one summer afternoon, we were in the orchard. Her young brother was helping us gather fruit. Oh, Tom, it's such fun to have you home. Even if for only these short visits. How's everything? Oh, just fine and dandy. Oh, I have so much to tell you. They, they made me deputy sheriff. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Uh, can't I see you alone this evening? Let's let's walk down by the river. Oh, I'd love to, Tom. Yes. What is it, Ned? Here comes Manton. He's tying up his team down by the gate. Oh, Gertrude, I, I can't stand that man. Why do you let him come here? Why, he's very amusing, Tom, and very nice. He's uh, very prosperous, but I agree with Tom, sis. He's a queer duck. Got queer ways. Well, Ned, what, what do you mean? Well, uh, I went after Partridge with him, and... He uses the craziest contraption. Yeah? How's that? He's uh, taken a long, straight branch, stripped it, and on the end, he's fastened a loop of wire that's sharp as a razor blade. A razor blade? Yeah. He sneaks up on a bird, then gets the loop over its head, and gives a quick jerk. And presto, bird's dead. Throat cut. Mm. Oh, Ned. Why does he do that? Well, uh, there's no shot to scare other birds. Well, that's true, and a good idea if you want slaughter instead of sport. And when he's doing it, Tom... His eyes look so queer. Oh, Ned, here he comes. But I'll see you alone tonight, won't I, Gertrude, dear? Yes, Tom, of course. Afternoon, Miss Gertrude. Hello, Mr. Madden. <laughs> Just thought I'd stop by to see the prettiest peach in the county. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Ned, my boy. Howdy, Mr. Manton. Why, Mr. Manton, look. Your hands are stained. Oh. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Miss Gertrude. I have been doing a pretty job of butchering. Finest calves you ever saw. Oh. Um... Uh, this is our friend, Tom King. He's been made deputy sheriff. Oh, good old law and order. <laughs> well, howdy. Don't you ever take your cattle to market on the hoof? I oh, prefer it my way. Besides, it makes for tenderer, whiter veal. <laughs> well, young woman, you look mighty near perfect today. Mighty near? I think Gertrude looks perfect always. Well <laughs> said, young sheriff. I guess, by and large, that everyone will agree that Miss Brewer here is an absolutely perfect specimen. Oh. No flaws, no faults. Now stop it, both of you. <laughs> well, as her brother, I'll say she's easy on the eyes, but a perfect specimen? Ha-ha. No, she oh. isn't. Now, Ned, behave. Ned, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, you tell him, sis. Oh, the boy's crazy. Uh, what's he driving at? Oh, well, it's all so silly. I don't know why Ned mentioned it, but the fact is, if you must know, I have only four toes on my right foot. No middle toe. What? Cut off by accident? No. I was born that way. Oh, a branded filly, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll never stray from your owner, will you? Gertrude, I... I never knew that. Why, it's of no importance, Tom. I never think of it. Ah, it's cool here under the trees. Uh, uh, mind if I sit on the bench? Oh, not at all, Mr. Manton. Here, I'll make room. Uh, uh, take my chair, Manton. I, uh, I'll be running along. Oh, Tom, already? Yes, I, I've got some business in town. Important, really. You, you'll you excuse me, Gertrude? So long, Ned. Forgetting me, eh? No. Goodbye, Mr. Manton. Oh, see you tonight, Tom. Goodbye for a little while. Well, gentlemen, I didn't go back that night, and that goodbye was not for a little while, but for a long time. Do you mean a defect in the young woman's foot made such a difference to you, King? Yes. It's a curious obsession on my part, but I know that if I'd married that girl, I should have been miserable and would have made her so. And if the girl cared for you... She we... couldn't have cared too much for King, for she soon married a gentleman with more normal views. You mean Manton. I get it. That horrible house we passed the day. But uh, you said Manton killed his wife. Yes, he did. Hey, wait a minute. Well, who's that coming out of the door? It's familiar looking. Oh, but it couldn't be. His name's, um, Grossmith. Grossmith, huh? Yeah. A cheerful bounder, if I ever met one. Nearly knocked me down when he arrived this afternoon. Hmm. Bit my ear off when I tried to speak to him. Well, no interview? No interview. <laughs> the nerve. He's sitting down right near us. Well, uh, I'm interested in this story of King's. Uh, 
Tell me more about the Manton case, King. <coughs> uh, your friend seems to be choking. Let him choke. Go on, King. Well, there's not much more to tell. I spent several years in the county seat before I came back here. The next time I saw Gertrude Manton was one day ten years ago. I was in my office when I heard a knock on the door. Come in. Tom, it's I, Gertrude Brewer, uh, Gertrude Manton. Gertrude! Oh, it's good to see you again. Why, you look... Don't try to be polite. I look old and tired and scared. And I am. Well, what is it? Here, sit down and tell me. Tell me how I can help you. Will you help? Ned's away and I'm in such trouble. Well, I've heard gossip that things aren't going so well at the farm. They're not. It's awful. There are no more cattle. No more cattle? Well, have a same why. My husband's killed them all. He cuts their throat. Oh. It's just sort of a passion with him. There were no more calves, so we killed our bull. Mm. And he started on the cows. Our lovely, gentle cows. Every so often, my husband's eyes get a strange, glassy look in them. He wets his slaughtering knife and sort of fingers it with an awful smile on his lips. Mm. Tommy's crazy. He ought to be put away, but... What must I do? Oh, now, now, Gertrude, dear, of course I'll help you. Take it easy. Now, don't cry. I won't, but... Tommy, he cut the throat of our last cow yesterday. I'm so frightened. It's having a terrible effect on the children. Now, now, see here, everything will come out all right. Please stop crying. I'm going to get Dr. Carter, and we'll drive out first thing in the morning. You will? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. I won't be afraid anymore. Thank you, Tom. Well, see you tomorrow morning, then. Goodbye. It's good of you, Dr. Carter, to drive out here. Miss Manton's an old friend of mine. Yeah, she's a fine woman, Tom. Oh, but that husband. Yeah. Doc, I want you to look him over. There's there's something very wrong. Oh, no, oh. 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 Lovely sunshine. <laughs> a lovely day off. What a gloomy place this is. Hello, Gertrude. Gertrude! Huh, she doesn't answer. Well, let's ring or knock or something. I'll try the bell. Uh, look here, Tom. The door's open. Hmm. Yeah, go on in. Gertrude, where are you? Uh, this house has the emptiest feeling. Are you sure she knew we were coming? Well, we arranged it only yesterday. Oh, she must be here. Uh, there's no one in this room. Hmm. Well, let's go upstairs. That'd be better. Come on. Doc! Doc, wait! Look! Here on the stairs. This, this thing, it's, it's sticky. Hmm. It's blood. It's dripping from... Hurry, Tom, hurry, up here. Good Lord. Little boy lying by the banister. Oh, his throat is cut. Gertrude! Gertrude! Where the devil is she? Doc, try the bedroom door. Tom. In here. It's Mrs. Manton. Lying across the body of a little girl. Both their throats slit from ear to ear. As tonight's Weird Circle tale unfolds, Many of you will note a familiar ring to the style of plot structure used by the master storyteller Ambrose Bierce, the incisive, racy style of the modern writer. Written before the First Great War, the middle toe of the right foot still carries the modern touch. In short, the works of good writers live on through the years. It's the same with Ogden's fine-cut tobacco. A long time back, when Ogden's first came into prominence as the top choice of roll-your-own cigarette fans, smokers were talking about and praising Ogden's. Today, just as then, Ogden's remains the popular choice of Canadian roll-your-own cigarette smokers, a fact that can be attributed only to unvarying excellence right down through the years. Try Ogden's for real smoking enjoyment. You'll agree Ogden's is easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. And now back to our story. Sheriff Tom King, years ago, had been attracted to Gertrude Brewer, but ended his courtship when he learned that she lacked a middle toe on her right foot. 
She soon married the well-to-do but eccentric Robert Manton. This marriage ended in tragedy, for several years later the town was horror-stricken to learn that Manton, in a frenzy, had cut the throats of his wife and of their two children. Manton escaped. The house has been empty for ten years. That's the story of the Manton murders. And a morning I'll never forget. Well, I don't wonder. It's a horrible story. Tom, you may be interested to know that this Grossmith, or whatever his name is, sitting near us here, has been glaring at you and taking in every word you said. Why the impudence? What, what do you think we ought to do about it? That's easy. Sir, I think it would, would be better if you'd remove yourself to the other end of the veranda. You are evidently not used to the company of gentlemen. I'll not be spoken to that way. Why, you ill-bred lout. You've listened to every word we've been saying. Now, easy, Rossi. You're a bit hasty and unjust. This gentleman's done nothing to deserve such language. I'll not take back a word. This man has been annoying me all day. Hold that tongue of yours, sir, and I'll cut it out. You will, will you? Uh, Rossi, please, please, please. 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 Ah. It's the custom of the country to demand satisfaction for an unwarranted blow. I now demand it of you. I'll give it gladly. I have no acquaintance in this place. Uh, perhaps you, sir, would be kind enough to represent me in this matter. You mean me? Well, I... I don't especially like your manner or your manners, but I suppose I shall have to consent. My name is Sancho. Yours is Grossmith, I believe. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Sancho. And you, King, will act for me, of course. What's the matter? What are you staring at? He's looking at me, and I find it most objectionable. Why do you look at me like that, Mr. King? I find you very interesting, sir. You're giving me an idea. Oh, I've had quite enough of this. Get on with the arrangements, Mr. Sancho. Very well, sir. I'll toss a coin. As challenger, Mr. Grossmith has first call. If he wins, he may choose either the weapons to be used or the spot where the affair is to take place. Right. Satisfactory, gentlemen. Toss the coin. Here goes. What do you say, Grossmith? Heads. Heads it is. Then I've got my choice of weapons. Yes. What do you want, guns? Certainly not. Knives. Boy knives, and I insist that it be a duel in the dark with knives. Knives? I thought so. You, uh, you like knives, don't you, Mr. Uh, Grossman? Now hold it, Tom. It's up to Rosser to say where this duel's to be. Well, I, uh... I'll speak for you, Rosser. As your second, it is my privilege to make the arrangements. All right with me, King. Well, then, gentlemen, meet me here in... in three hours. Right. It'll be dark then, and I shall drive you to the place I have chosen for this strange encounter. Mr. Sancho, I depend on you to buy the longest knives you can find in this town. I'll be here at nine o'clock. But for now, I've had enough of you gentlemen's company. Look here, Tom. What the devil have I got myself into? A duel. A duel with knives. And, just as he says, in the dark. But I didn't bargain to get ourselves into a mess like this. You realize that we have the choice of place, don't you? Well, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you, Rosser. Well, as second to this fellow Grossmith, I must ask you, King, what's your planning? Is it some sort of practical joke? Not exactly a joke, Sancher. Well, uh, where is this place you have in mind? A rather appropriate spot. Remember the haunted house I showed you today? You mean where the Manton murders were? Exactly. It will be the most perfect setting. And now, if you and Rosser will only help me carry out my plan tonight when we get to that Manton house, this is what will happen. Oh, what? Oh, oh. All right, here we are. Come on. Get out, Grossmith. This is the place. What are you waiting for? I happen this is a trick. Well, of course, Mr. Grossmith, if you're afraid of spooks, why... I'm afraid of nothing. I'm coming. The uh, choice of place for this duel was ours, Mr. Grossmith, and we have chosen this house. Go in, please. Oh, dark as Hades. Well, here, wait a minute. I got a candle. I'll light it. There. That's better. Now, here's the room. The dust is a foot thick. Here are these infernal cobwebs. They're like rotting cheesecloth. Come, gentlemen, I'll hold the candle high so you can look into the room. It is large and square, as you see. No fireplace, no furniture. Only this door and two windows, which are boarded up. 
It will be utterly dark. Mr. Sanger, is everything all right? I, uh, I think the gentlemen should remove their hats, coats, and vests. All right, but I don't see the sense to it. Shall we leave them here in the passage? Yes. Very well. And now, gentlemen, here are the knives. They are exactly alike. You may examine them by the candlelight, and while you do so, I shall search you, Mr. Rosser. Nothing. Now, let me hold the candle, King, while you search my principal. Right. Mm hmm. Well, I'm satisfied. Well, Stancher, I think we're ready. If it is agreeable to you, Mr. Grossmith, will you place yourself in that corner, the one farthest from this doorway? Well, I can't see a thing. Feel your way along the wall. And now, Rosser, you here in this corner nearest the door. Right. Now, gentlemen, you are both in position. Remember, you are not to start fighting or move. Until you hear the closing of the outer door. I shall now blow out the candle. There. There is the darkness you ask for, Grossmith. We leave you now. Good luck, Rosser. Goodbye, Mr. Grossmith. Are you with us, Rosser? Right behind you. Then here goes the outer door. All right, Rosser. Come out of that corner. My knife is waiting for you. My knife. I love a knife. I'll carve you up, you blackguard. Well, why don't you say something? Rasa, where are you? Come out of that corner. Very well, I'll get you. Are you sniveling fool? Are you afraid? Oh, a corner. But I'm getting nearer to you, Rasa. Why don't you move? The door. Now. Ah. Ah. There's no one here. Russell, where are you? I'll get you. Ah. Russell, speak. And I can't hear a thing. No footsteps. He's not in here. By heaven, I've been tricked. I'm alone. Alone in this house. What's that? Oh, I'm cold. It's getting cold in here. Oh. Oh, that glow of light. Well, who's there? No. You. You, not you. Not all three of you. No. Oh, go away from me. Stop. Don't come any nearer. I... No. Come in. What's the big idea of sending for me so early in the morning? Oh, hello, Sanchez. Hello. Did he get you here, too? Yes, he did. Well, Tom, what is it you want? Boys, that hoax we framed up last night doesn't look so good this morning. How do you mean? It's got me in a spot. You see, there's something about that fellow Grossmith I didn't tell you in Sancher. I drove right back to the house after I left you boys last night, and though I called and yelled at him, there wasn't a sound. He wasn't there. And he didn't come back to the hotel. Well, what do you care? I never want to see the fellow again. But I've got to find him. Well, I just... never should have let him get away. Just what do you mean by that, Tom? Well, I mean just this. When Grossmith challenged you, I thought I recognized him. Yeah. <laughs> that fellow isn't Grossmith at all. Huh? He really is... Hello, Tom. I guess I'm early. Ned Brewer. Well, I... I didn't expect you here this early. Well, I got tired waiting for you and the county commissioner. I'm glad to see you again, Ned. Uh, you know Sam Rosser, the advocate? Of course. How do you do? Welcome back, Ned. And this is the commissioner, Mr. Sancher. Uh, glad to meet you, sir. How do you do? I'm Gertrude Manton's brother. Uh, I guess so. Well, Mr. Brewer, the county will be glad to give over the custody of the farm, and since you're here, we might as well drive right out there and get the business over with. What do you say, Tom? Sure. I'd like it mighty well if Rosser here came along as a, as a witness. Well, why not? Of course. Make a good feature story for my paper. But I bet it will bring back powerful, unpleasant memories to you, Brewer, to see that Manton place again. I wish I didn't have to come out here. This place drives me crazy. Such ghastly recollections. I can't ever forget that day. No, nor can I, Ned. It was stark horror. Unbelievable. 
Poor Gertrude. What happens now, Mr. Sancher? Well, we wait here till noon. It's nearly that now. Good. And then, if no other claimant puts in an appearance, the state law says I hand the custody of the place over to you as the rightful heir. I don't know what I'll do with the place. I certainly never want to see it again. Now, let's go inside. The door's unlocked. Well, there's nothing here for anyone to take anyway. Gloomy, isn't it? What a ghostly effect, that light filtering down from the upstairs windows. I remember this room to the right here. I thought so. It's empty. Wait! Come here, quick! Huh? What? What is it? What's in that far corner? I think it's a man. Uh, it must be Grossman. Hey, you! Hey! Tom, wait. This man's dead. Stone dead. Why, he can't be. Rosser, kick out some of those boards so we can get some light in here. Right. I'll help you, Rosser. All right. He's been dead for some time. He's rigid. There's his knife on the floor. But well, there's no blood on it. Look at his hands. Palms out and those claw-like fingers shielding his face. There's not a mark on him. See if you can help me lower his arm. Certainly. There. Look at those wild, staring eyes and that half-open mouth. Can you figure out why he died, Tom? This man died of sheer terror. Don't you agree, Ned? What? Why, Ned, what's the matter? By heaven, Tom. It's Manton. Look, you saw him once at our place, didn't you? Yes, but he wore a beard then and long hair. But you're right. This is Manton. Manton? Grossmith was Manton? Tom, Brewer, do you see what I think I see in the thick dust? Where? What? There on the floor. Leading from the door straight across the room to within a yard of Manton's body. Footprints. Bare feet. Three parallel lines of them. This is awful. A woman's footprints in the center and... On either side, the marks of children's feet. Look at that. This nearest print of the woman's foot. The middle toe is missing. The middle toe of the right foot. Gertrude. My sister Gertrude. Tonight's presentation brings to a close the present series of Weird Circle stories at the Ogden's Playhouse. For the past 39 weeks, we've brought you the great mystery classics by the world's master storytellers with the thought that in the entertainment offered you would find enjoyment. If the presentation of this Weird Circle series has attained that objective, Ogden's feels that the purpose of the series has been met. Till we meet again, then, here's a reminder. Try Ogden's Fine Cut Tobacco. You'll find Ogden's easy to roll, delightful to smoke. Yes, easy to roll, delightful to smoke. If you smoke a pipe, try Ogden's cut plug. It's a smooth, mellow pipe tobacco. Restless Sea, once again next time.